Okay, so <coughs> my name is Nicholas Harding, and I'm going to share a script that I developed for my internship, which I've been given permission to show everyone and let you guys see what you can do with it. So, wait, as you can see, we've got a really cool looking uh, mesh here, and it's using Nanite, and we've got Lumen on, and it's looking pretty good. It's it's not the greatest mesh in the world, it's not going to be one that's going to win awards, but this model has come from Google Earth 3D. So the script I'll be showing you is a automated pipeline to get your Google data into Unreal. And by automating it, we've saved ourselves a few hours of manual work and we've saved ourselves time waiting for plugins to import the files and then wait for that and then wait for the next bit and so on and so on so <coughs> when I tried to do this by hand it would take hours and that's not ideal so I wrote a script that will automate your process for you and get things moving in the right direction so you can save time in improving this model by hand if you want or you can wait for my next script that I'm working on to automate the whole process and output a really nice mesh. So as we can see we've got what you'd expect if you go into Google Earth and as I said it's not the greatest model so you can see the nanite kicking in when we're really close and that lovely little of effect that nanite does when you've got vertices that are close so it's not allowing triangles to change as such um, but it's using nanite and lumen and that's was the goal for this project so it's it's fit the bill for the project that I was working on and essentially this actually works in VR and there's a few tricks we can do to up the performance and make things run a bit smoother and look a bit nicer and stuff so one of the things that we can do just like quickly as you can see points six lumen if we switch this down to point six we get a much better color and hopefully lumen doesn't have a wee bit because i've experienced some lovely lumen problems um maybe someone out there can comment on this video and say oh you need to change that and that will fix that but at the moment i'm trying to fix that that's not what this video is about. My video here is showing you how you can get this from Google Earth into Unreal with next to no human input. That said, there is a little bit involved in getting things prepped and getting the data. So there is still a human element to it, but the whole joining of it and things is all automated. You will need to get some plugins, which I will show you shortly. But before we switch to that, let's just prove that I am not lying and I'm actually using uh, Lumen Nanite. So we can see Nanite triangles are moving a little bit. This model could do with some more vertices removed just to make it a bit more more friendly with Nanite, but we do get a little bit of triangle changes, not the same level as we'd like, but we are getting some on the bigger areas. And, you know, it's not really something that most people can say that they've got a really big model with Nanite and Lumen on working in VR. So, as you can see, if we actually allow the max frame rate to be shown what we're doing we're sitting around 
you know, 120, 160 with the triangles on, and if we go back to the lip mode, we're hitting 140, so the requirements for, um, oh, what do you call it, VR is 90, so we're quite, quite comfortable, so when we switch to that, and we open up the task manager and bring him over, have a quick look at the res oh, not that one. resources. I'm not using much of my GPU, so when I do switch to VR, I can actually, you know, get it to work a bit harder and produce the results that we want. So I'll just quickly show you in Unlit what the model looks like because I think it looks a bit better in Unlit. And just a quick background on this model, this is a model of 4K quality, so I don't have a 4K monitor, but I'll show you some little tricks you can do so you can capture 4K quality images and actually get these higher quality textures into your model. So when you, if you do have a 4K monitor, you won't need to do it, but if you don't, there's a few tricks we can do to actually combat these. And if we go to project settings and we scroll down to rendering, forward shading, lumen, lumen is on. And if we go to the directional light, it is movable, so it will move with it just to prove that lumen is on. We'll go to lit. I've actually turned off the shadows, have I? No, cool. So I think there's no shadows being cast on the model because I've turned it off for this just to get some extra frame rates out. And you can turn off more things that you don't need. But if you are ha having issues with your model, I'm going to say Lumen is the culprit. And let's see if we can get Lumen to have a wee freak out just to show you that there is still it's not going to do it no, it's not going to do it for you there might be some if you experience flickering on your model when you do get to the stage it's going to be lumen that's probably causing you the issue just so you guys are aware um, so without further ado let's get to the fun stuff Save this and exit. As you can see, when I'm flickering, I'm actually trying to fix things. So, before we get started, we're going to need to go to Maps Model Importer. So, this person, where is his name? Eli. Michelle or Michael, I think, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, has written a very, very cool script as well. So it's actually a plugin script that you can, as you can see, click import and things and import it and all that. And if you're having troubles with, if you don't use my script and you're doing it all by hand, do look at his readme and his troubleshooting information because it's really thorough and it's on point. He's recently just uh, released a new version which I haven't tested yet and for this purpose we're not going to actually use it because I've not tried this new experimental feature but if we look at if you put the new requirements here or is it his show you in a second but we also need these two and these two will be an add-on that you do have to pay for I don't think it's actually six dollars I, I think I had to pay seven US dollars for this one and nine dollars for this one so they're not expensive at all they're pretty pretty cheap for what they do like they're absolutely amazing bits of 
plugin software that he wrote for Blender and out of the three of them this one is definitely going to save you a lot of time and I mean it's going to save you a lot of time so recommend this one and you need this one so the plugin that I'm using if we go to releases is version 6 one because this is his latest release is this using the experimental one I don't think it is uh, no so if you do want to try his experimental one with my script that's fine um, but there is if we click to the thing no. so this is the one he's updating. I don't know if it's complete, but we can see the changes. It's coming, and basically, all we're going to need to do is this bit here. And I'll show you in the script how to change that if you want to use this and give it a go. But that is the only bit I'm quickly going through. Yep. Yeah. So there's just one line we need to add to the script. If you're using the one from his actual branch and you decide to go with doing a clone repository or a download zip sort of thing, otherwise you can click on the download releases and clicking on the source code like this. So if you don't use GitHub or don't know how, this is how to get it. But if you use GitHub, or you're a bit daunted by Git commands and stuff, have a look at GitHub Desktop. It, I'm not advocating this bit of software as what I use all the time, but for general Git pulls, pushes, and merges and things, GitHub Desktop makes life a lot easier. And for those who aren't comfortable with using Git commands, this will make it a bit easier that's if you want to try and use his new one otherwise you can actually go to the page and click clone and do it that way so you copy that and things and then open with github desktop you know or download zip so that will download the whole current master branch whether it's working or not because he's not put it as a release i don't know you're more than welcome to try it. So let's have a quick look at the readme. This is important because as you can see there is certain requirements. So if you're using the older version which no longer works because of render docs are no longer able to inject in Chrome, you need to upgrade to the 6.0 version. So if you've already used this uh, plugin before this video and it's not working, it's likely this is the reason. So, we want version 6 or later, and we're at 6.2, that's the version I'm using for this demonstration, and render dot 1.25. Now, he says Blender 3.4, but I can confirm it works in the latest Blender release, which is 3.6, it's the one I've been using. And if you're doing modeling on your high poly model and you're doing UV unwrapping because you didn't want to get the lily capture, that lily texture packer, sorry, and I'll go into details about that one in a second, um, and you're doing UV unwrapping and baking, look at 3.6, you'll save hours of time with the new overhaul on UV unwrap. So I'm not going to download this, I've already got it. You can download that zip, or you can go to the release package, which is the 6.2, which is the one I'm using, and download that zip, or the tar file. So, we've got that. Now, for the script that I wrote, you can use the texture packer only if you're doing one import. Otherwise, you are going to need the capture merger 
to do your capture mergers or things are just going to break but you can tweak the code the way you want to work so if you don't feel like using the capture merger and you just want to pack the textures per import that's fine you'll just need to tweak the code a little bit and I'll leave that at your own discretion but essentially what the texture packer does is it takes all the images that your import has and puts it into a nice big image file so when you do your original imports it gets something like a thousand to two thousand textures per import depending on your size and quality etc so it can save you a lot of time if you're not doing any rendering or texture baking to your models rate it it is definitely a five star one so you pay this you go yep and then it will give you the download etc and I'll show you how to install these plugins in a second for those who don't know how to do that but this will save you some time and help out down the track as I said this one is definitely a must if you want to save yourself a lot of time and it goes through the same process it's got lots of uh, information and videos on using these if you don't feel like using my script but that's entirely up to you <coughs> so the next one that you're going to want is my script so to find me just search up you know what, we'll do a Google search because I'll attach a link anyway, but in case you don't find it, it's uh, 306 GitHub. There I am. And we click on to here and we'll go to repositories and there it is. I will attach a link to all these add-ons and the script as well, but just giving you guys a different way about it. <coughs> so this is currently in a pre-release pre version, as I'm still adding bits to it to make some error handling a bit better. And I'll hopefully we don't run into that in this video, but I will show you what is currently happening and. That is just the way the map model importer works and my catches aren't catching it quite the way I would have thought they would but I am fixing that so don't worry in the full release version it will solve that issue but at the moment that might be a problem but I'll show you what we can do afterwards anyway if that does happen and as I said we can go to the releases pre-release and we can download the source code. Now, I have tweaked it a little bit, so that was the pre-release. There is a new version. And I've just updated some methods and comments. So I recommend doing it this way. Click on code and download zip. So just so you know, that's what we need to do. And I've, there's a little bit of a readme just sort of explains a little bit on how to use it um, so essentially these are all the scripts and add-ons that we need and the last bit we're going to need is render doc now if you remember and I'll bring it up just to uh, show you the version on 6.2 requires a render doc of 1.25 this is 1.27 this isn't going to work so click on other builds and scroll down and there's 1.25 there if you're 32 bit 64 bit or Linux click on the installer that you need and I went for a full install get all the extra features and so on <coughs> so now we've got all our software and let's see if I've actually got it I tell, told a lie I don't have render doc on this one 
Oh no, I do. That's okay. I do have it. <laughs> so, I'm just going to close this because before we get started, we need to do what's called inject into process. But if you can't see this, then you're going to need, and you, and this is the first time you use render doc, I guarantee you won't be able to see inject into process. So you need to go into settings and on the first general right here, enable project process injection. Click it, restart required. And from memory, when you click it, it doesn't restart. So you click OK, and then you actually have to close it and reopen it. So annoying, I know, but it's something you have to do. So just a wee heads up. When you start Edge in the debug process, which will be the next step for getting your captures, you need to make sure your browser that you're using is not running in the background like edges. So we'll close that. And I've just realized I'm going to have to show you the command anyway, so I'm going to have to reopen it. <laughs> and it's good to see these sort of mistakes because you know I've not edited it massively <laughs> but essentially what you do is you will need this command and you need to set it to wherever your Chrome or Edge browser is now it goes into depth about using Chrome you don't need to use Chrome anymore Edge is built on the Chromium engine so Essentially, it's Microsoft slapped over Chrome is the quickest way to explain it if you don't understand what I've just said. <coughs> you can use this command if you want, but the one that I use is this one. So, and the reason I use this one is because it's easier and I've had better success. So, copy it, and we're going to close Edge again. Yep, we are closed, and let's create a new folder. Let's call it demo. So there's my script for this model, so I'm going to go into this and I'm going to copy the scripts I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to reopen this and as you can see when you download um, my zip file for this you'll get a cool command that I'll show you later um, so that's there, demo. Let's put the text document here and call it debug edge run because that's what it's going to do. It's going to put edge browser into a debug mode and we're going to paste it here. And it didn't copy, so let's. So that's the command pasted. We can close this down again. Go to Task Manager, Close Edge. Cool. So, as you can see, I'm using Windows. It's going to open up a command prompt and then it's going to do the set render hook for us and it's going to start Chrome. But I don't have Chrome and that's not where it is. So, let's open this one up and go to here. Now you can go through here and find it manually or we can go to the Edge browser and go open file location and there's the shortcut where it leads because this is actually what we need. And we can go 
like that if we want. We can. Sorry. Go Control C by selecting that, or we can go copy as path. Entirely up to you. And from memory, we don't actually need those arrows. That's just to show where it gets imported. But as we can see, it's there. Disable sandbox, GPU startup, and cool little trick that we can do is save as and put it as all files and go dot bat and we close that and that and as we can see it's given us a little windows batch file so instead of clicking it and then go copy from here because that's essentially what we're doing. If we save it as a bat file, this is what it's going to do. So we might have to get rid of that anyway, but we'll see in a second if I've done it right. Now, the next step that we need to do is inject into process and type in GPU. As we can see, nothing is there, which is good. And Let's see if it runs. Yep, it opened, and we can see the GPU starting with an ID of 100,000. Now, there's nothing here. Let's refresh. Ah, there it is. Inject. So now we've actually injected into Microsoft Edge, and it's actually linked up with the render dock, which is what we want. So we can OK this now. And as we can see, we've got a lovely capturing at the top there and so on. So before I move on to the next step I'm going to show you if you are like me and you want to get the best capture possible because who doesn't if you can some settings that we can do. Now they've updated the uh, AMD software the other a few days ago so I'm still getting used to the arrangement so bear with me uh, audio and video no transfers no okay. yeah, graphics this is the one we're after so we want to actually turn some things on and these have been off because I've just put a new CPU and I've had some issues so it keeps turning them off so hopefully we don't get a crash, but if we do, I won't be doing this. But I'm just going to show you the ones you need to turn on just to get the best the best images and the best model possible. Because why not? So we don't need that one. And anti-ASN. The one that improves. Yeah, that's the one we want. It's only for DirectX 9, and as we can see, this is DirectX 11, so it's not going to make a difference to that one. And we want high texture performance. This is going again on DirectX 9, but might as well turn it on. But this one is a good one to have on, and if you're not using HDR, this is a good one. It can actually improve your image quality, but I'm not going to do it as it requires a restart. So I won't do it for this demonstration, but if you're not using HDR, turn it on. It does improve your images a little bit. Not much, but it does improve it. <coughs> now this is the bit that we need to do Oh, we got a crash coming on. Mm, close that. We've got lots of things running as we can all see. But the AMD 
the software has decided to die on me. So, latest update from AMD is very stable, as we can all see. <sighs> so let's try this again. I apologize for this, but this is a battle that I've been having all week, and it has delayed this video a lot, just to do with AMD drivers so I've been having a great time trying to get this video up and running for you guys but come back to that because this video is going to run a long time otherwise. So Google Earth 3D is where we're heading next. So let's talk about some other settings we can do. You can do this on Chrome if you're using it, but I'm going to show you on Edge. So there's some things you can turn on to help with getting some experimental features. If you have any issues, you can disable them or put them back to default as they were. We're going to allow our GPU, if you've got one that will do it, to actually increase some more performance and get some better images and so on. So there's lots of little experimental flags and you probably couldn't see, but all I put in was edge, colons, double forward slash, flags. And for Chrome, it's just put Chrome instead of edge. And that's it. That's the only thing you need to do in the flags. But the ones that I'm turning on is the GPU restoration and the Ziri copy rasterizer. And the next one we need to do, just so we're getting the best, you know, experience for our captures and getting the best data and so on, is turn on hardware acceleration. Yep, there it is. This may cause issues with AMD users, and if you're familiar with it, you'll know why. But I haven't had ex that same problem with mine being on. They may have fixed it, or I just got lucky. I don't know. Um, that's one of the things with AMD at the moment. So, oh look, we're uh, we're on. We're, we've decided to start up. And all those settings are still there, that's cool. So, as we was trying to say, if you want to get like a 4K capture, we got to click on the display that you're going to be doing it on, which for me is display 2, and then turn on virtual super resolution. Now, this is the AMD version, I believe. Uh, AMD. Oh, it's AMD, NVIDIA, and spell it, um, virtual resolution, DSR, so it's dynamic super resolution, um, is one thing that you need to do, so you turn it on, 
might want to turn GPU scaling and scaling mode to keep it as aspect and integer scaling and we can turn up this but I'm going to turn this one on for the other AMD I'm not sure if Nvidia's got something like it but I can guarantee you they have something like it for sure turn on vivid gaming because I want some brighter colors for my model anyway so once you've turned your super resolution and these other scalings on we can close that and we can go to right click on this or you can search it but you want to go into settings and we're going to go to our display settings so if you've got your super resolution on you can actually set oh, the wrong display and as you can see I can't go over this but if I turned it on Your super resolution is now on, and do I want to put GPU scaling on just to show you what I'm doing? Nah. Should be more than enough to, yeah. See, now I can actually scale above my allowed um, pixel resolution. But if I do that, it's going to make the video look really weird, so I won't do it you do this and to prove and then you'd have the scaling set and I, for my display it was like 250 for the zoom scale and you're going to have to restart your edge browser and things to make these effects go in so just something to bear in mind if you are wanting the 4k captures you know what, actually let's do it because why not Cool, cool, cool. That's all done. And it'll just make my life a little harder, is all, and not your guys' problem. So, settings, display, display 2, 3840 by 2160 is 4K. As you can see, that is 8K. And I'm not going to do 8K because that will make things really small and weird. And keep changes and 250%. Oh, look. Remove that. And now I need to apply that change so I can readjust OBS to make my video actually fit in to the capture for everybody to see. So now we we'll can see my mouse and things. So as you can see, it's changed this, and I'll just prove that it is actually doing what it's saying it's doing. And it didn't apply the change. Cool, so we are now all set at 4K, and I'm going to need to close Edge again because it doesn't want to close. Yes, cool. And F refresh, cool, we can't see any windows. And let's go back to our debug file. As you can see, it's made things a little bit weird. I'm sorry if it's made things a bit difficult to see, but I thought you guys deserved to see 4K in action. And we've injected into the process again, and we can minimize this. We can now OK that, and Google Earth is going to open for us. As you can see, it's using the command line. This poses stability and security risks. That's OK. We can close that. And just before we go, let's go edge, not flags, settings, just to show you, is it settings, no it's not settings, sorry, it's GPU, so this is really cool to sort of see 
for those who are trying to do things with their web browser and so on and issues they might be facing but let's get into the meaty stuff just to prove that we are using 4k and it is up soon display oh, that's the one we're on so it's shown that we're at that and it's scaling it from that so if you want to get a better a better version I would suggest taking the scale off because it's not actually scaling it correctly and that's Windows's fault so it's actually going over oh no it's actually still 4k sorry yeah that works out right and as you can see down here 4k support true so we are using 4k which is good to see and as we can see we've got a really nice cool looking area of where I was actually doing it in and let's set that to zero and turn off some junk we want clean because we don't want that right in it's just adding extra things to load that's just going to slow things down and settings now depending on your hardware you might not be able to do this but if you can max that out that will make things load a lot faster and make things a bit easier for you you know means you can lose we're not interested in that and we can hit save and as we can see we've got an experimental version of earth so that's okay now for the version of render doc that i'm using and the blender and plugins and things it says to move and that might be more of a chrome thing or it might have changed but you don't actually have to move it anymore and I'll show you that in a second um, and let's get into the good stuff now so just before we do a capture what I will suggest doing is zooming out all the way to 25 and doing this so as we can see it's now much bigger much bigger area has been loaded and the scale let's inspect that because that's helpful no, not that one that has opened in a new window sorry I've had it on full screen getting confused then so just something to know make pay notice to is the earth spinner see the value changing this is telling us when the data is fully loaded for this area this is important to note because if you take a capture that's not a hundred percent it's going to cause you issues so we've got a 100% so let's move into this area and we're going to have to wait for this again but because we've turned on the memory storage it's much much quicker now so let's just open up render doc and my mouse is off screen and I'm going to put in three frames because that's what I want and just drag this off to the side so we can do the capture and it didn't capture properly and that's because it was still attached to something else so when I did the uh, inspect it was actually capturing the inspector not the uh, Google Earth that we got going on in here so I'll just redo it so all I'm doing is hitting capture frames and then I'm bringing my mouse over and I'm just mousing over it. Just making, that might be 
actually rendered off. That's so we've got the data size and things and texture viewer. Yep, cool. So just just uh, process mesh ID. So just because I've got my um, resolution turned up, it's coming out like this, um, which is making it look like it's not actually loading in what it actually is so I'm not going to use all these captures for this demonstration otherwise it will run on forever so I'm just going to use I'll use two frames and I've taken six captures so these have got the most biggest size which means it's likely to have the most data so I don't want these four so all I'm doing here is clicking and holding control down while I'm clicking Delete, yes. Cool, let's capture, right, say here. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You can do this at an angled view, but the import might work, it might not. Um, I've found that it's more consistent by taking bird's eye view the data though is a little bit more messier from personal experience um, but that you know depends on the area you're doing like the area that I'm capturing right now isn't actually the best data in the world um, it's pretty raw in comparison to some parts of the world where you will get some really good data I should say and and that's because they've actually put in 3D models themselves, so they've actually got proper geometry models in there. But for the area that I'm capturing here, it doesn't. This is just all satellite imagery generated models. We can zoom in and out, but I recommend just taking, you know, at the same altitude and so forth. But just to give you an idea, of what, because this is the area I actually demonstrated to you. And by the looks of it, they've actually cleaned up some of the uh, colors, which is nice to see. So I'll be able to get some better captures in. But as you can see from the earlier demo, the only difference is at the moment is the colors, and that's because the last captures I did were not as high quality on the color inside of things I had some filters turned off so I will be doing this all again just to get these extra colors in but as you can see it all looks pretty much what I was showing you so let's exit out of full screen and zoom out I zoom in I mean just because when I come back in I don't want that sort of uh, issue and that is all the capturing on the Google Earth side I'm going to show you just because otherwise the script's going to run for hours and hours so the next job is to go to Blender so it's blender.org and prove that we'll just go Google and Blender and click on Blender Home that was the first link so 3.6 is the LTS it's 3.61 or something and I was using it on the beta but I've actually upgraded to this version now and when they say better UV packing they do not and they don't give themselves enough credit out there for what they've done from 3.4 to 3.6 it is phenomenally better like I said hours to minutes so click download and it'll bring you here and you can download this one there is other versions that you can download but I can confirm 3.6 works if you are having issues with getting the plugins to work on 3.6, then let's go to builds. 
and let's look at all archive versions because that's what we're having to do. We're going to scroll down and we are looking for the first 3.4. <coughs> and that's right I remember them removing it from the page so the only way to get 3.4 is actually through the github and I don't know why they've done it this way but I have a feeling it's to do with some of the bugs or something but you can click on the versions as you can see the dates and the times and click on these and you can see why they may have reverted back from the certain change or they made these changes but find 3.5 stable 3.5 definitely works with those plugins but if you are having issues the other way around this let's go back Sorry, Blender 3.4 get, and we can see 3.4. There we go. So it's on their old page. So release notes 3.4, and So let's exit off that because we've just proved that it's not there. So go to the Blender GitHub and we want to go to Blender and go into here, click on main and put 3.4 and see if we can see it there. Nothing to show. Releases. Did they remove it from the tags? In here, they have okay. So, this there it is 3.4. So, I have a feeling that there is something either someone's post they updated 3.4 to 3.5 and the branch was removed or or what I don't know but they've got all their old releases but 3.4 has gone so don't know what happened there but it has been moved but that is how to get it you have to click on this tags and go through the pages till you find it if you're having issues with the plugins which I am not so bring this back over we've got my captures and there's oh, where's my mouse gone there it is so we've got this of the last three i did because i did three sequential frames and i only want say two so i'm going to delete this one press delete yes now let's select these four that we've done and we're going to save it and we're going to go to my desktop because that's where the folder is demo and I'm going to call this folder we'll call it RDC because that's an RDC file so might as well call it that and we're going to call 4k yeah 4k will do and it's going to save now it will let you close it after you click save. I recommend just waiting and making sure that those files are there because I have closed it and it doesn't actually save the files properly and you run into a bunch of headaches and we don't want that. We want nice and easy workflow. So I'm gonna go back to my recommended window size because I want to be able to show you things a bit clearer and so on so I close that I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so you guys can see what I'm doing and let's see we've got 
four frames. Yep, they look all about right on the file size. Yep. And just to make sure that you know we've got the uh, textures and things, we're going to click on it and then have a look. Yeah, we've got a few color passes. We've got a texture viewer. Can we see anything in the mesh viewer? got the buffers anyway so that's okay but we've definitely got the texture so that's all that matters and we can close out it's worth checking anyway the other ones so after you've done that one go back to here just click on here and we'll look at the texture viewer just to see it's got the texture yep textures to work off or four RDC files to work off I should say so you've got your plugins to install next which we'll do in a minute but I'm just checking that everything's there and we'll change something in that in a second and I'll show you how to do that and I'll show you why we're going to do that but let's move on to Blender So we're going to have a new file, and I'm not doing any animations, and I've just stuck that up my mind. Cool. Select your own scene, press X, and click delete. We don't need the collection, so we can delete that too. And we're going to save this, and we're going to put it to a desktop inside demo. And I'm going to call this demo, because that's what it is to me demo save so that's one of the other requirements done dusted next job preferences so depending on what system you're using if you've not used blender before um, I recommend clicking on system finding the best version for your rendering um, Kuda and Optics is NVIDIA and Hippon One API is AMD basically. As I believe there's another one that shows up if you have um oh, what's it called? Intel, I believe. They've got their own GPU RAM now. Um but yeah, so in 3.6 HIP RT is now available for experimental. You can try it, see if it works for you. If not, turn it off. And I've got my GPU and my processor all ticked because that's what I want it to be using for this. Um, I did originally have a 5600G instead of this 5900X and this 5900X has been causing me the issues and delayed this video. So a couple of things that we want to do is if this is your first time using it, turn your undo steps down. And the reason is it's going to keep the data essentially running. And you don't want that because it'll store it on the RAM and your RAM may fill up and you might get a crash. So let's turn that down. You can turn it to zero if you're just going to use a script and that's it. That's all good. Um, I've got lots of RAM and I'm going to show you a trick to do as well to give yourself some more wiggle room for those who don't have lots of RAM. The next thing to do is go to here, viewport, and tick these off. I'm saying this because you can run the script through the command prompt or you can run it inside Blender. If you run it inside Blender, turn these off because your imported model, when you start to look around, is going to be very jittery. And I might even just show you with it running. They might have fixed it in 3.6, but ever since I've used Blender, it's been an issue. So turn it off. It's not very helpful anyway. Um, and what you can also do, and I'll show you in a second, to get the same information and not have the same 
because uh, what this used to do was called st cause stuttering when you were moving around or it'd lag when you move it and it just it was an absolute nightmare now you can turn on python tooltips if you want but as you can see when I hover over something it's giving you the python command to actually execute so if you're interested in adding your own bits to the script and you're not sure what it is that you need to do this is a good starting point it's not the best because these are known as higher level methods so these methods are what you're seeing in the editor like this is what the editor will be calling so that method will call this and then that is likely to call some mid to low level methods or functions um, and as you start developing your own scripts or improving or tweaking to your preference this will uh, be very helpful to get you started but you're going to want to look at those lower levels so status bar now we're not using anything in duration because I'm not doing a video in here but I've got my scene collection vertices, faces, triangles, objects, memory and VRAM and the version all in here and that's what that does so if I turn that off and it goes away video system memory scene statistics so that's the my preferred way of having this so you get your stats and things and not have the uh, stuttering effect so let's get to the add-ons now if you haven't installed it you'd click install and it will be in this drive and is it going to be that drive? no it's going to be I believe it's in keep so I've got lots of these blender files at the moment and they're all hundreds and hundreds of gigs and it will be that one so as you can see a bunch of add-ons that I've got so there's the lily capture merger there's the Lily Capture Texture Packer, and as you can see, that's my Maps Model Importer, version 6.2. So what you do is you find wherever you downloaded your add-ons and click Install Add-on. I don't need to do it because I've already done it, but that's literally all you have to do. And then you go Map. If it's not ticked, tick it and lily capture measure ticked and lily texture packer tick there's nothing you need to do we can remove it if we wanted i'm not going to and that is it and so you can save preferences before we get out of here i will show you another one that i will recommend if you're doing some modeling by hand and it is machine three tools this is a great add-on there's a paid version and a free version but the free version is more than enough it takes a bit of getting used to but once you get around it it's got a bunch of really helpful and um, predefined methods and shortcuts that can really save some time so if you're doing some modeling on by hand after this on that model you import then recommend it <laughs> so we we'll save the file again and what we're going to do because oh, I'll show you anyway because this is what we can do so we go into here scripts constant and go over here and open so I might as well show you it running in here first um, but I'm going to do the bit editing inside the my personal preference of uh, code editor which is VS Code and that's the only two files you need to open and as you can see there's a bunch of files that need paths and naming this one here is commented out at the moment because this is coming into my next script and 
this is where my bake textures are going so let's get into open the browser and show you the editor that I use in case you want to use it so VS Code it's a very lightweight um, IDE is free version paid version depends if you're working for somebody or not and I wasn't so you can download the uh, this one go through the uh, install process and so forth and if we will open Visual Studio Code and close it again because it will be easy to do this so if you have it set up when you install you can actually click right click and do it open with code yes I am the author so I must trust it what example would I be showing you if I didn't um, you can actually right click it and open the whole folder and have it there which makes navigating around the files a bit easier or we can go up here and do open folder or open file You've got the keyboard shortcuts um, and you can do it that way and select it there is some really cool add-ons if you do want to actually do some more scripting um, on there or developing your own script perhaps and this one very helpful this one helps with formatting doc strings helps you do this I've got Copilot, so that helps me a little bit as well. Um, and I've just started using it. And what else do I do? You might need to install Python, so it will prompt you up here at the bottom. By the way, if you do, and if we click in here, they're going to show me the bits down here. And I've been using Sorcery as well because that gives you some awesome refactoring options. That's something I only discovered the other week, so that's pretty cool. Um, and is it going to. No. But as all AI and so forth aren't always the most. What's the word I should use? Consistent or reliable, unless you know what you're doing. If you are getting errors, from what they're doing it's likely because they're doing it wrong and that's just you know how it works it's the best way to put it and be polite about it <laughs> the next bit as well if you're going to do some in uh, in-house coding is you need to install Python for one if you haven't already um, which is something I should have led with before getting into the extensions. Now, Python is actually, uh, I think it's 3.7 or something for Blender at the moment, so you can't use some of the great, all the, the great features that you get with Python at these higher levels, but for most scripting purposes, Python 3.11 will be fine, but if you're getting Python compiler errors, then it will be because you're using a Python 3.11 technique or method, I should say, um, instead of a previous version, because it might be a method that's not actually in previous versions or the styling's different. But you click on downloads and download it and add the paths and things I'm not going to go into it because this is not what this tutorial is about but you'd also need to do uh, pip I think it's uh, oh, bpy fake and it's by this person called nutty 
very popular on the Blender forums and stuff and very active. But essentially I would do this one because we're not using 2.93, we're using 3.6. And type that in and you run the command, but I'm not going to, I've already got it. And basically all it does is it allows you to see the uh, render, uh, not render I should say, all the Python uh, methods and what their expected inputs are and give you a bit of helper text and things like so if I go and save it so I can get the actual information in BPY ops dot object dot select all and that's GitHub kicking in but as we can see, it's given us all the information, and that's what you get from install on that pip command on this fake BPY. So if you're interested in doing scripting, download it because that's very helpful. So what we need to do, let's start with the constants because that's the big one. As you can see, if we ran this, this is going to crash. Well, it's not going to crash because it'll the script creates most of these folders except this one. So let's go to our folder and right click on that and go copy as path. And we're going to go here and we're going to go inside like that. Now we need to add the double back brackets because if we don't, it's going to get confused. It's the easiest way to put it. Essentially all it's doing is saying this is actually a backslash and not something else. It's ensuring that and you need to make sure you have this at the end. And the reason for this is because if you don't, it's going to come to here and it's not going to look inside that folder. It's just going to get to the folder and think this is not actually a folder, it's actually a file. And it's going to have a very, very bad time. So, as this is where I want all this, let's just do this like that and like that. neat trick if you're using VS Code is press Control F is, which is what I did press Control V and go replace enter, replace enter or replace all look it's changed it all and I have noticed it has decided to put Single quotes in. Shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. It'll be fine. But if it is an issue during this video, it's going to be because of that. So hopefully it isn't, but we'll get to that bridge in a second. So this is a quick rundown of what's going on. So when we do, if you've got the Lily Texture Packer, you want to set the max image size for your packed image. And the way it, his method works is it's not actually going to get to this. It's going to get underneath that. But this value will ensure that it's not going to go over that. And I'll prove that in a minute <coughs> after the script is run. But essentially, the script works and it will work out which face how many faces that you need and stuff to stay in there in that limit when it does call that method to pack those images capture resolution this is here for anyone who's adventurous enough to do a manual override and essentially what this is doing is telling the script 
that the images that are in the file are actually captured at this resolution but there's a method that automates this and gives you the correct capture resolution to give the right pixels shade flat um, this is always set to true by default but you can set it to false if you want and we have the auto smooth which is also part of the reason why I have that set to false and that's the default angle for it but the reason I've got it on shade flat as true and auto smooth on and off as false is because when you set them to those opposite values you get a tiled effect on your model which is not quite what you want um, and I'm not sure if that's a blender thing but by default these things are on or not shade flat I should say it's rounded or something from memory um, and it's not going to give us the best model so we don't want that now you can have your imports as stock or you can actually remove some double vertices and I have this set as default like this because having it at this ratio depending on how close up or how far your uh, model is from your capture so the capture that we did in this video was around 40 or 60 meters so it's going to be pretty detailed as though if you're up close so there'll be a lot of overlapping vertices and this number sh needs to stay low 0.1 until you've actually done some experimenting to see whether you want to go higher than 0.1 or, or if you don't know much about blender modeling I would keep this number really low but this is something you're going to have to experiment with and trial so my recommendation is before you run this script I'll show you what I mean go to your RDC file create a new folder and say these two move it into there and what you're doing is just limiting the amount of imports because this does take a long time to run um, but I'm not going to do that for this um, so a little bit of trial and error to find that that sweet spot as, as I would call it so if we go right down to the bottom and I, any developer out there will be looking at this going no but the reason we're doing it this way is because of the way blender works and their path their library paths and script paths aren't the same as what you would expect so we can't actually have our imports as a normal Python script up here it will fail it has to be down here and it's because we have to do it this way and we have to do it this way and it's really annoying but shout out to Cardboy Zero on Blender Stack Exchange was going through and found his recommendation and how he did it I've tweaked it a little bit just to actually align more with the solution and get it to work the way I wanted it to work so what this is doing is essentially saying this is where the blend file is and it's actually in a folder in the same path as the uh, blend file it's going okay so we're in this this file path oh and then into scripts and there's where these actually exist and that's just telling blender where to find it when it runs and I'm really sorry if I got a dry mouth okay so we've done all our housekeeping side of things and we'll just quickly go over you can skip to the next part if you want but I feel like it's worth talking about uh, you can turn these off by commenting them out it's basically giving you print telling you where it is saving because it will create these file paths in a minute and the text file and stuff, so forth 
but essentially what it's doing is letting you know whereabouts in the script it is, what it's done, and if anything actually goes wrong, you can use it for debugging, be like, oh, it, it stopped here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty handy. And I also have got a method to check to make sure you've got the plugins that you need, and if you don't, it will if you don't have the Lily Capture Merger, um, it will stop the script completely. And that will be because it's not detecting the required plugin. By default, the script requires you to have the Lily, uh, not the Lily Capture Merger, but the um, Maps Model Importer. There's a minimum default for the script to run. And then we move on to getting all the files. So this is why the uh, IDC file path has to be where it is. Like this is the most important line out of the lot in here because these other ones will be created for you. So you don't have to actually create these folders. So you could actually put it wherever you wanted, but it's nice to keep it consistent and in the same area, but if you're running on low on file spaces and so forth and you want your textures to go somewhere else or your FBX file to go somewhere else then this is where to do it. So if you've only got one file it's only going to call this method or if you don't have the capture merger it will call this. And here's the other version if you've got more files and you've got the capture merger. So quickly go into here because this is likely if you're going to have a crash this is where it's going to happen and the reason for that is uh, in this method here the import RDC file uh, is this the one I was looking for? yep I believe it is Essentially what this will do is call the maps model um, operator inside Blender and perform the import. Now I do have a try and expect uh, exception catch sort of in here, but I have been finding it's not catching the system exit that this performs. So I'm not totally sure why it's not catching it yet, but I am this is my main area of focus on this script at the moment is to fix this for you guys and that will be in the release but if it does fail for whatever reason and the exception doesn't catch it we can still uh, I'll show you what we can do in a minute um, not in a minute but if it does fail on this or I'll and if it doesn't fail on this I will get a problem file to show you what to do when it does fail. But essentially all you have to do is go into your generated text, find the problem file, create a new folder and go like problem and find that problem file and move it in there and that will get rid of that frame. And the best bit about the script is you can, once you've got rid of the problem file you can just click rerun because it will carry on important like nothing had happened so that's a pretty cool little feature um, and then due to memory problems and stuff if you are like me and I'll show you because showing and actually doing are two different things um, if I go to properties you can start to get lots and lots of files really quickly. If we click into here, I've got different altitudes and different angles, etc. And go onto this one and click into here. So when you import your render dot file, it unpacks it into a folder like this. And essentially, if we click on this one and start re 
5341 and if we scroll down it's a sen it's a little bit bigger than that but so you're essentially doubling your memory size per file and I'll show you what we can do in the script to avoid that but just something to take note if you're running low on space before you start you are going to run out of space there's no two ways about it so as you can see that folder for just the current RDC was 6.6 .6 gigs this one is 37 gigs and on another one that I've been running this on is about 90 gigs and that's because I've got a lot of captures because essentially the more captures the more overlaps and tweaks and so forth you get better data and it just works out better you'll end up with a better geometry model for it but it takes a long time so be prepared for that so as you can see here we've got this little uh, little if statement after you do an import so I'll show you at the top change that because that looks like it's calling the method and it is because I have done a boo boo so let's rename that to should and I will upload this update to github for you because I don't like that that's not my way I like to code and it's always nice to have your variables different to your actual methods. So, apologies for showing you that, but it's there. So, as I said, it is pre release, but it was working. It's just not nice to see. It makes reading, makes reading difficult when you come through your script, for those who don't know. Is, is one thing. There's also other aspects to it but that's part of it so if you are conscious about space then you can set this to true I believe it's set true by default and this will delete your RDC file after it's imported because essentially you don't want it it's redundant after that but you might be testing or want to run it a couple times so set that to false and the other thing to do is if you've got the space copy it and back it up compress it to a zip file and you can have that data available to redo or reuse so always pays the backup if you can but as you saw it can get quite large really quickly especially on large areas so just something to note now let's set this to true because we want to export this to Unreal after it's finished running we want that off we want that off and because this is in demo let's go high poly demo why not and I'll let GitHub uh, Copilot fill that in for me I've only been using it for a week and it has been absolutely amazing not always correct or helpful but so there are all the settings inside the script that we need to do anyway we've got our constants file paths are alright script is ready to run and I'm actually going to turn off delete RDC files and the reason for that is because when I run this script I want to show you inside three different ways to run the script is what I want to do so when we downloaded the zip file 
I left a run command here. Now, the reason I've done that is because I make life difficult. So, let's go new text document, run command. Paste it into here. So, we need your path to your Blender executable. And best way to find that is if it installed to your new install Blender and it's still here, open file location. And you can go launcher or, or you can go here or you can go through your C file and find it. Go that way. As you can see, I'm using 3.60 when we hovered over that. So, just something to bear in mind. I'm going with the Blender Launcher and I'll show you why. Is it Blender Launcher? No, it's not Blender Launcher, sorry. This one. And the reason why we want this one is because it's opened with a command window and that stays open. If I click X on this, it's going to actually close the whole thing. So this is the one I want. And I want the copy as path. Go to here. Select that. Control V. To Blender. Now we want the path to our blend file. So we go to our folder. Click on it. Not double click though. It's already open. Select the section. And I've put it like this, just just makes it a bit easier to understand, just so you know what you're looking for. You're looking for a dot blend file. And not your dot blend one, because that's your backup. And background, so that what this command is doing is actually instead of being open like this, it runs it in the background through the command prompt. So your command prompt will be running and blender will be running in the background, but without the editor. And the reason I've got this little command phrase in here is because the as the models get bigger, more resources get used, and you might be prone to crashes. And when your files start to crash towards the end, it becomes really frustrating. And what I mean by that is. file's gotten so big that it's been running for a while and you're getting towards the end and the last thing you want is it to crash after it's been running for a few hours so it's quite annoying when that happens but you know it's what it is so we got our run command all written out now we can say saved it as a text file or we can do the trick again and we can save as a bat file. Now, interestingly enough, there's going to be th three ways I'm going to show you how to run this script. And running it inside Blender will give you the worst performance and the worst results. Running it through opening your own command window and copying and pasting will give you not the best results, but it will be easy to identify if something did go wrong and running it as a bat file will give you the best results and what I mean is I don't believe this script will be affected too much by it but my next iterated script which will fix the models you will see vertices and polygons and the counts will be different and I don't know why that is a blender blender thing but essentially what it's going on is it's basically like um, removing double more double vertices but still output in the same looking model so don't know why but it just does and that's just really annoying so Let's show you how to do this manually because why not if you don't want to use my script. 
So you've got your empty scene. If you're going to do it manually, you're going to need a new collection. And we're going to go... Not that one. Import first. If you've installed and activated your add-on, you should see this. And we're in the right folder because that's where we've put it. Now, when you're testing, and I'm going to do this because I don't want to spend ages waiting for this. Um, you set this number, but when you're actually doing this by hand and you want the whole thing, leave it as negative one. That will let you import everything the way it should. So by doing 100 blocks, I'm limiting the import amount. And before I run the next script and show you things, and there's a couple of extra settings we can do to get some more performance and allow bigger models to be made. Because essentially, when the script is running in background, it's not using the GPU as much. And when it's running in the editor, I should say, it's not using the GPU as much. Um, it's more to do with RAM. So if we have a quick look, as we can see, I've limited it down to 100 blocks and we're already nearly at a gig. So it's not very helpful, a bit annoying. Now you might be tempted to exit because it's saying not responding, not responding, it's not doing anything. It is doing something, it's just taking its time. So while that's trying to figure out, let's give it some help. So we open up your task manager, go into details and you can right click and set priority. Personally I won't be doing this because it's going to make the video jittery and things because it's going to allow higher resources to it. But you can click on that and it will give you a bit more juice. You will have to experiment because this is a system by system basis. It may cause crashes, it may not, it may freeze, it may not. It's just it's something you're going to have to try on your own because not everybody's computer is the same but in my case I have found high and real time stable on my old GPU I should put um, on my current GPU this has not really done me any favours but you can do this to give you some extra juice if you need it as we can see it's a pretty small area and it's definitely not the size of the capture because we can show you that because we've just imported this one which is this one and we click on it have a look at it in texture view now we should be seeing something like this but as I said I've limited it to a hundred blocks so it's made it very small and so forth but as you can see looking pretty good mm kind of looks familiar, it looks like Google. Now that took a few minutes just for 100 blocks and we got some massive blocks so let's... Uh, I'm not going to import the other files because we'll need it to merge and I don't feel like waiting all day for that to run. But essentially you'd import it as a collection one as your first import for that file. You'd create a new collection like so, so basically let's add a cube to collection one. I'm just going to do shift D and I'm going to move that one into there. Essentially what you're doing is you're clicking on one, this is the keyword, one item from each collection. And then you would perform your Lily Capture Merger. And it did nothing because they're not sharing any vertices or any data like that and likely to see if I open up the window could not find any matching texture no surprise there but that's what you're going to do if you want to do it that way and then once you're done what you would do is do the lily texture packer and that would pack your textures I'm and then the next step would be to save the image which would be after all these calculations have done, and believe me, it takes a long time, you go into here, you find 
the images and as you can see these are all the images just from the 100 blocks so 100 blocks equals 100 images just so you know that's why the texture packer is so helpful but essentially it'll be down here as lily texture or lily texture packer or something so you just put lily into your search bar and you'll find it open it click image and you'll have a save option to actually save the image and you'd save it the name you want and so forth and then you'd have to go onto your models and join them all together yeah so you'd have your thousands of models in here or objects I should say in blender and you'd have to press Control J to join them all up now and then you'd have to delete all the uh, materials and you can do that by clean up and remove unused material slots but there will be lots of material slots you can't use that trick um, but you can like oh, I add a mesh cube and drop down we've got data here but if I added a material new we've got a material so you can do it that way after you've joined them all but when you join them all you're likely to see thousands of them not very uh, helpful as you've got to delete them all hence the reason for automating So let's get this saved, show you the next trick before we run this script, just to give you guys an idea of some things you can do. So I'm going to computer management, which is not the one I wanted, I meant, sorry. System, sorry for Windows 11 users and advanced system settings. So I'm just bring that over and under performance we can click settings and if depending on your hardware you might want to click this, disable all this. But I'm leaving it on because new CPU and she does the job with the stuff on so I'm going to leave it on. But if you need more performance, just click that and it's likely to uh, do this. I'm taking them all, but I don't want that. The next tip is this one, and this is probably going to be the one that's going to save you the most headaches and allow you to work with bigger models. And this is all dependent on hard drive space. So what this will do is use your hard drive as a virtual RAM to store excess information and cache it off. I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM. I've set my maximum size as 128 gigabytes. So as you can see the initial size is that and it will increase and I'll show you while the script's running what's going on and give you a quick rundown of why this is helpful but essentially what this is allowing is if it needed to use 30 gigs of RAM and I've only got 20 gigs of RAM it's not the right number size but it's just a let's use proper numbers actually so 16 gigabytes of RAM and I needed 20 I'm going to have 4 gigabytes of RAM missing and I'm going to get a BSOD and it's going to say memory access violation or the computer might close Blender down before it crashes but generally what happens is you'll get a B-Sod because it's tried to it's filled your RAM all the way up and it's tried to add more in and your Windows processors and services all these things running in the background it's using a little bit of RAM something might start up and it's going oh we don't have enough RAM oh, crash 
and that's a safety mechanism and nothing wrong with that it just can be really annoying when you want to create big models so really helpful helpful thing to set and I highly highly recommend it it will save you a lot of headaches and if you've got the hard drive space do it and my recommend other recommendation about doing it is choosing a hard drive that is the quickest mine is my C it's a uh, PCI 4 MVM so it's got really quick write and read speeds not as quick as my RAM but going to be a lot quicker than my other SSDs so we will go back to memory because that's what we want to see so as you can see these values do not add up to uh, 64 gigabytes and that's because it's caching off into that other area so just it's just something that should show you and it's going to save you a lot of time down the track okay so we've set we've got everything set ready to run I'm going to first show you it running in here just for those who aren't comfortable or don't have access to a command prompt due to uh, admin or user privileges sort of thing um, so essentially what we did was we edited it in our editor we opened it here and because we did changes I may have done it a bit too quick for you guys to see but I will go back and just make a change and let's change that to 18 and it's going to save and we go back into here we've got this thing hovering over here a little red exclamation uh, question mark I should say click on it you can reload from disk or make text internal reload from disk because we've edited it outside and the changes that we made such as the constants which is our file path have been changed and we want them to actually be the ones that we're running so without further ado we've opened the import merge texture package join we're in the scripting tab up here and we're going to click on this play button which is run script or alt p for shortcut now if we open up the command window now if you didn't have the command window open before you started this it's not going to be there and you're going to get a loading wheel um, so just bear that in mind and to do that you click on window up here and there's a thing called toggle system window um, and that will actually open up this little bit or if we go into here instead of having blender launcher you can load this blender bit so it's not blender launcher it's just blender and that's in your program files but by default your desktop shortcut is going to be the blender launcher but if you want the uh, command window to be open by default click on the blender that will give you that command window without having to open it just another little tip that I've found along the way so while this is loading let's close render dot because that's using up stuff that we don't need and as we can see GPU is doing a bit for the importing but basically after the importing the GPU won't be used we've got already a load of, of RAM in use and so forth so while this is happening this is going to take a long long time and depending on how many files you've got you could be here a long time I had a file I'll show you why this is going because why not give something to talk about um, 
the one I was doing it on this one and this is a lot of captures just for this type and as we can see we've got some really small folder size uh, file size just to say that is likely going to cause me a crash because comparing it to the other captures this isn't uh, the same sort of size in so I've obviously done a capture that's not fully loaded or the uh, particular frame that I captured wasn't of a good quality and that's something you should you'll become familiar the more render dot captures you do but keep an eye on the numbers and after you've taken a few captures you'll sort of see which ones look weird to you but to me those look weird but I've got 230 items there for that one and in this one because I was trying to see how angles would work I got 93 there so that's 20 gig there and it's going to give me a figure no so I can bother with that do I have any in there no so properties on that one 95 gig for that one and there's 227 there 74 so that's 160 gig that took a couple of days to run just saying so it depends on how many you've got and commitment you want to run but for that 4K model that I demonstrated at the start, it's in this folder and it is in this one. No, I might have deleted them as it loaded, but I don't think I did. Uh, no, I did. So for the demo model that we saw only 34 files were used and that took half a day to run just under half a day I should say um, so more files the better quality of the capture the longer it's going to take your hardware etc what you got running in the background um, so a time does add up a bit so I'm going to let this run and mute my mic and I'm going to come back and hopefully we don't have any errors along the way there shouldn't be but you never know and just before I go as you can see FBX generated text really textures all being created for you all these folder paths and text documents being made for you so you don't have to cool so I'll let this run and we'll come back and show you some more
Okay, we can see the script's ran, and <coughs> we can see that we have some shading that's not been set properly, I believe. Yep, it's still got it on, even though when we look at the value, it's zero. So. If we click on to that again and click that off, okay. So we'll just save that and we can see models here. It's looking pretty sharp. So what I'll do is I'm going to re-export this because it didn't do what we wanted it to do and it's a good way to show how what the script does for you anyway. So copy and embed the textures, selected objects only. Now <coughs> As this is going to Unreal, I want X forward and Z up. That's important. Geometry, I want face, loose edges, triangulate, tangent space, don't have any anim animations, and export. While it does that, I'm going to get GitHub desktop open to review some changes I made because I had solved that problem and I have a feeling I have either removed something or have a look at that in a minute. So it's exported. I'm going to delete this and the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you what the script looks like when it's ran outside of Linda. And we just go into the FBX file and rename this something else. Let's call it one. Oh no, better yet. Inside Linda. Long name, I know. But yeah. So, like before, here's this run command that we did earlier. I'm going to highlight it. Control C. Get the command prompt up. So, if you don't have it here like I do, search for it. Um, or run up file location, and it will be in your C drive under start menu program for Windows, in the app data, Roman, Microsoft, Windows, start menu, programs, Windows system. So big file path and this is only a shortcut but I'm not going to show you where that goes because I don't want to show you where that goes. So we paste the command in, control V. Uh, some command prompts won't let you do that so I believe it's control insert or control shift insert and it says if I just do that and do it again so it's shift insert shift insert so it's shift insert or control V some just depends on how your command prompts configured 
so let's go and show got the little textures and just in case the export doesn't go well uh, I mean the import sorry because it can happen inside Unreal just so we don't lose it and press enter As we can see, it's running. It's doing all the same things we saw. And if we have a quick look, there's Blender, but no Blender open. This is what it means by running Blender in the background. So I'll let that run and mute my mic.
Okay, so as we can see, the script has finished. Let's open it up and have a look. So as we can see, that same little nonsense is happening, despite it being set to zero and actually being set in code to off. And let's just open up the code in a second, but we'll re-export this out and label it something else, because I did have it working on the previous beta version, so whether the release version has introduced something different, I don't know, but we're going to find out together and fix this for the next run. And as again, X is forward, Z is up for Unreal, in my case, don't need the animations. This one command prompt and while that exports, let's open up the code and have a look. So that's been set to false. The name is correct. Let's go to the method and double check. And check that I've not erased it. So one nine nine. So that is correct, and I'll just double check the one that I've been using recently, just in case I've changed something there. And let's open it side by side and have a look. does look like it's a new addition that's been added to Blender, that's annoying. But, as you can see, it's an easy fix, and it's not the end of the world, but it's an annoyance that we will solve in the full release. So we've exported it, save it, exit out, and 
I'm going to track down, I'm going to move this off to the side and track down any changes I've made somewhere else just in case because I've been running this non stop. close this now and for the final demonstration we're going to run the command that we created so it's the same command except we saved it instead of the text files a .bat file and that will open the command prompt for us and it should run a lot quicker and we'll just label this as cmd prompt input and we're going to click run and what should do the exact same thing but most likely a lot faster and with some luck we'll see the auto smooth actually be resolved this time and if that's the case, that will be an annoyance by Blender, but we will find out together. Apologies for that, I clicked on a file I didn't mean to.
Okay, so it's right. Let's have a look. So as before, we can see we've got the uh, slight annoyance of the auto shave not kicking in despite being set to zero and so forth. But I believe this is the problem here. So I'm going to do a little has to fix that and hit clear. Look at that. That's gone. So I did a bit of reading and it's only that. <coughs> and unfortunately the previous test data that I've used didn't actually have that, so let's add that fix into the code. over here and go scripting because there it is there, that's the command. I'm just going to paste that in. So we can get, need to be a bit more specific. I got a sneeze so <coughs> my apologies. So that'd be fine. <coughs> so that should solve our problem, and I'll run a, another video with less RDC files, just two, just to speed that up, so we can see that working in a minute. So that's saved. there so let's add something else in because this little yellow dot means it's the origin and I've been looking in the other script and I've actually got this to be fixed so it's in the center of the mesh on the surface so essentially what it will do is we click on that and go set origin and we're going to set it to this one here origin center of mass so there and if we just clear these to as we can see we're in the center of our in blender x and y so I'll add that in as well and we can see that in our next run so let's go over here and Check the method. Subject patch data, clean data. I know I put it in here.
be using. And copy that and go back to this method because this should be as well. fix that origin and we go back here we can get rid of that because we don't need that That, that should be enough, and we'll just re export it. But we will leave that as that one so we can see the difference. So, <sighs> pose. Never mind. It would have looked like what we just saw anyway, so that's okay done now. Maybe we got lucky. No, not quite. And reload the disk. So, we can close Blender because we are done for the time being. I'm going to delete this so we can actually see the new script in action. And yeah, that's everything. So let's just do the RDC. And as you can see, we've got lots of files now. And we're at now five and a half gig. They're about two gigs worth there, so give or take. Yeah, one point six. So that that ties up. And we don't need these anymore, so we can delete them. You can't actually reuse them unless you've not done your texture scraper then or the lily texture packer, sorry then you will need these because that's where your images and UVs except and all that are stored so again and see the delete function in action. Let's set that to true. Cool. So we'll run this command in a second but ah, let's get it let's get it cooking now. Right, let's just rename this FBX so it doesn't break while we're importing into Unreal. Hmm. 
let's reopen up Blender because that file size looks wrong, as we can see. 189.6 versus 654 for the other two. So let's find out what went wrong. And this may crash, or it may not. And this will be because I closed Blender before it exported fully, if that's the case. So while Blender does its thing, let's move on to the next bit. And... We don't need that anymore. Unreal Engine. So for those who don't have it, this is a pretty awesome piece of kit. So what we want to do is go to download and find out which one you want. Read the instructions, the specs, the licensing, just because there is basically some things that will matter to some people, such as royalty and system requirements <coughs> but for 5.2 which this is what it's advertising we need a 64-bit quad core 2.5 gigahertz and 8 gig of RAM and we can also look at the Linux ones if you're a Linux user different requirements and so forth just word of caution, this is the bare minimum requirements and oh sorry, it says recommended, but I can tell you for nothing, eight gig of RAMs is not going to cut it unless you're working with a very small model for this demo. As we saw it's getting quite large. Okay. So basically you scroll down download the launcher and you create a account with Epic Games if you're not already on Epic Games and they've got this lovely lovely video on how to install it so I'm not going to go into too much depth about it but you'll have to install a few things and one of the things that you'll end up having to install is um, what's the word I'm looking for <coughs> Uh, visual code add-ons possibly depending on what you're doing in your project so download it install it and once you have it you'll have a launcher you ignore this one because this is my old unreal engine shortcut and since sorting this out unreal engine has gone from 5.2 to 5.21 which is what I'm using now so Keep that in mind, it does get updated. And we're going to go to the library and let's just quickly touch base on this. So you can add in some options, it tells you how big it's going to be. So it can get quite large depending on what you're doing. Just something to bear in mind. Now this is off by default, but when you're working in C++, very helpful. And if you have crashes, it will also help there. So if you have any problems, add this option, but it is going to increase the size of your file by a lot. It's nearly half the size, so just bear that in mind. And let's launch that. Now you can actually, if you sign up through their GitHub page and go through the hoops that you have to for that, and you can actually get the engine from source code and you can modify it, but 
there's plenty of tutorials on this but if you've not seen it and you are thinking about you want to tweak it some more have a read the documentation has improved substantially since 4.26 anyone who was using Unreal in 4.26 will understand what I'm saying but previously some of the documentation was really good and a lot of it was either missing or just needed more but since five, Unreal 5 it's improved substantially so just bear that in mind but this will tell you how to go about getting Unreal Engine through the GitHub and all the things that you need to do and then like before we can download the zip and actually have the full engine um, essentially code and all so you can actually modify it to do however you want it to work so you might like to want to edit something in the actual editor because you don't like the way it works or you've got something cool that you want to do inside you can do that um, and you can see all the branches are there and lots of other things in there so if you're tech savvy or want to have a, a delve into things then this is always a good place because you can see what they're fixing and see it, other issues that have been raised by people so uh, let's look for issues they might have turned it off but generally we can have a look yeah they've turned it off so you used to be able to see issues but they've added in conversations instead I think it's to stop people from trolling it but if we go back to the blender github we can go into here and uh, go back have they changed it as well So we've got the old one, but let's just delete that one. Because why not? Delete. Just so we can see fresh project and what to do to get it to do everything that you want it to do. So let's browse and demo because that's the folder I want okay and we want to go game I do blank but you know you can do first person third person get the characters in there but for this demonstration we're gonna go blank and blueprints maximum quality enable it if your GPU can handle it you will need ray tracing for Lumen, just so you're aware. I'm not going to enable starter content, and it's going to the right project place, and we're going to call this demo, and click create. So while that's doing that, and it does it very quickly now, the compiling and shaders is much, much, much faster. So close that one, and here and 
we're going to run this command script again just so we can see it running in the background so we go doo -doo -doo -doo. and it should do it very quickly because we've only got two so hopefully no crashes while we're doing lots of extra stuff in the background now this is one thing that is sometimes annoying is when you start Unreal 5 you're going to start in this level here and it's to showcase their world partition system and what it used to be was a basically I'll show you in a second when I create a new level so we go file new level and I'm doing it up here because doing it up here gives you these options so we're going to create so as I was saying just before it was essentially a level like this but this was a little bit smaller it had a chair on it and some other stuff and it was a bit more basic and the previous level we saw is really good for people who are starting out but it can be annoying for people who are trying to do stuff so let's create a good level we're going to call it level, some people call it map, some people call it levels it's entirely up to you as long as you're consistent cool, so this level is now saved and before we start kicking into the importing let's do some project setting changes because why not? Because we're going to have to restart some things. So depending on what you want to do is basically in the rendering. So if you're going to look into VR, you need to look into this. Um, for my project, we were using multi-sample anti-aliasing and we were turning off this one as well um, but I'll show you the issue at the moment with that because we're using Nanite and Lumen we're not going to use light maps because we don't have any UVs for this anyway so it's a no-brainer and they'll add extra overhead so if we're not using them turn it off so we can see Lumen is the default now. It used to be the ray trace or none. So they are making Lumen a requirement now. And I believe that might be because I've ticked the ray trace as well. So if you don't tick ray trace, Lumen may or may not be um, enabled. But if you do ha not have it enabled, you can enable it and it'll be another restart like this. Because we're using Nanite we need the virtual shadow map and this is where if you read around Lumen works better with the old shadow maps but incompatible with Nanite so we're going to leave it as that. Shadows are expensive, so we're working with high polygon meshes. We're going to leave these turned off. So, this is something that could be an issue with Lumen. I've not had too much time to play with it but we might be able to turn this off to fix a potential problem that might arise <laughs> what else do we need to turn off if we're looking at VR so bloom and mirror occlusion 
auto exposure that one because that baked light in and we're using lumen and motion blur so these are things that you would tick off I'm going to put them back on because we're not I can't demo this in VR because I don't have VR but these are things to pay attention to anti-aliasing method These are things that we can turn on and off to help with performance. This is all to do with shadows and so forth. Read the description, they give you basically an idea on what it does and what it can possibly impact. So that's essentially all in the rendering settings. It, you don't need to turn these on and off unless you want to use Lumen and VR and things, but and I'm going to show you something with virtual texture as well, so I've enabled that to show. So, the other thing we need to look at is under project and maps and modes. So that's the default level, let's change it to demo level, because that's what we're working on. So when we start up the editor, that's the level that's going to load, and when we press play, that's the level that's going to play. So, handy to know, and this is only if you're um, looking at doing multiplayer basically. And we've got game modes and so forth, and these are things you'd set up for your own game project, but just keep an eye on that. And target hardware, not that one, it is. So sometimes this isn't enabled or you might want Vulkan because you're AMD like myself. So I'm going to leave it on 12 because that is basically NVIDIA and AMD much better but Vulkan does work but I've not tested it for this project so I'm not going to turn it on. Um, yeah, so that's everything we need to do. So let's restart that and see how this is going on. Still ticking along. Cool, see? We are in the level that we just created. So that's cool. And dismiss that. So just before I get too carried away for those who are looking at VR depending on what you're using you might want to use this one or this one or this one and turning on VR and these plugins will require a restart for them to be activated but as I said I don't have this actually in so I'm not going to turn it on so let's open up our content drawer and look at that, our demo level is sitting outside our level folder. So let's move it there. And just two seconds. Sorry about that. So 
let's keep up a good file structure. So we want mesh and textures. Another folder and call it Google Earth. Mesh. Is it mesh? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's mesh. So I prefixed it with mesh because this is actually that so we can actually get rid of the mesh folder because that's not how it's done and just we'll look kind of and get the start of content but we've prefixed it with mesh it's generally like actor or whatever the model is and then you have your mesh here and your materials but this will be fine this is what as long as it's consistent with you wherever you are that's the main thing. So let's go with import and we are going to desktop <coughs> to demo and that's right got carried away so we'll start the import for the first one. Okay so this fine so just re-export it out because we didn't do it on selected objects but you know I think I know what's going on so auto use relative path so it's using the blend file and things and that could be problematic especially as we're running the script in the background so let's do this really quickly let's forward up my transform geometry face that's the just tension don't need that and we are good and we'll just put it in here and we're calling it that one and we need to s check because that's going to cause problems in a second if we're not quick enough done it and let's delete it and save and exit before things get weird with the script so back to the import let's click build NI we're not using collisions for this because as we saw the models a bit complex so we don't want a collision that will encase the outside so you can always add collisions in later, but we're not going to do that. And we're not using static lighting, we're using lumens, so we don't need the light map. So if we hover over it, it's going to give us the information. No, okay. We shouldn't need to do this because it's already one mesh. Actually, we'll leave it ticked off so we can prove that it's needed and we want import normals and tangents because we've exported them yep might as well leave it as a scene that's the right full name it's embedded so we don't need to search for materials but we've got materials saved in case it doesn't import correctly because that can happen and it's really annoying when it happens but and if we go back to this one at imports, we can see our bat files actually matching up nicely now. And we can see some differences, so that's interesting. And why 
as imports. I'm going to go have a wee snack, so I'll be back. So, 
we're back and as we can see we've got some issues and this is down to the way the models come out and that's gives you some documentation to follow to fix it but we don't have to worry too much about it but it might cause us issues and this is just down to the raw data not being the greatest and that's what the next script that I'm working on should hopefully resolve so let's click and drag and look at this we've got a model and it's looking pretty sharp and let's turn on nanite so we can actually see it working and turn the FPS on and go here and let's go overview so we can see what's going on so we've got our clusters which is the big triangles when you're moving in and out and the little triangles as we can see the houses are still pretty much close to that so they're not going to change much which isn't the greatest and we've got our materials so we set this to I think it was 8k max and we'll look at this in a second but at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 our raster bins and this and if anyone who knows Nanite looking at this model and seeing they're all red it's not the greatest but it's working let's just take it as is so we're sort of hitting around 120 <coughs> and we have a look at our model we've got quite a few vertices and polygons and we'll go back into blender just to see show you the difference between the two models that we've done and so on and that's because different altitudes the closer you get in, the more data you get. So I'll quickly cover that and put that in what about the Google Lots and things. So just something to bear in mind. And let's allow Max FPS to go up in case it wants to, but I don't think it's going to for this model. And I'm right, it's not wanting to. So let's turn off some extra things that could be hurting some performance and let's turn the intensity down because I find 6 lumen, is, or 6 lux I should say, is too bright and as we can see it's not made much of a difference to the overall model in regards to that. So if we go back to 6, really really bright, don't like it. 6 is pretty good. And we've got actual shadows. So we've got our actual shadows being casted from Lumen and the shadows that have come in on the mesh from the Google data so maybe you want to leave it on there maybe you don't but for this I don't really want it there so let's get rid of that oh wrong one sorry let's go cast shadows let's type it into here to make sure we've got cast translucent shadows no cast static shadows no 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 and this will help your performance as well if you're not using shadows so skylight no 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 and as we can see the performance is starting to increase so just something that can actually have an effect So we've done that, got a little bit more performance, not much, but every little bit helps. And as we can see, the model has a little bit of 
artifacts, but let's just take it and save it. <coughs> and press play so we can see it in the actual editor. And the performance is going to be a bit hit as well because I've got Blender running in the background as well. So this performance will be actually much higher. As you can see, we got a little bit of lines going a bit everywhere, and that's just predominantly down to this was taken at a much closer altitude than the model that we did earlier. So we've got a lot more data, and we'll, I'll show you that in Blender in a minute. And the sample size, we only used two screenshots per section, so we did two screenshots for this area. And we, um, what's the word I'm looking for, sorry, a bit brain fog. If we'd used more samples, we might have got a cleaner model on top of that, so just things to bear in mind, but it's helpful for testing to keep it small as we might need to increase our merge value for the script we might need to decrease it just depends on the log on the google side of things but yeah so that's the first model let's delete that and let's put these materials into here textures into our texture folder because let's make it nice and clean and we're going to go out into the content folder and call this inside blender just so we can know where it came from and I'm just going to copy that file name because I'm going to create And we're going to call this command prompt beyond PT. Let's see how the script's doing. It's nearly done. And we want textures. I'm just going to keep it low. Okay. and we're going to import that one. And it should, if you are re-importing again on the same time, all the settings that we did before in that first model should be the exact same, but it always pays to double check your work. good. So we'll leave that to import. This should be nearly done. And we can see if things have been fixed or not. issues as before. We can uh, consider doing that, but we won't do it for this demonstration. So let's move our materials into our material folder, and move our textures into our texture folder. Cool. And let's drag this one in. And our shadow can come 
off on that. Everything else doesn't need setting because it's already set. And let's just close this down, get the full screen. As we can see, we're looking at pretty much the same model. And we can go to Nlight, do a quick overview. One, two, three, four, five materials, which is good to see. And TL Max, it should want to change, but no, okay. So let's press play. Things are looking pretty good. Oh, it's about the same, really. Funny that. So let's just bring the content draw back up. So we got. The nanite vertices we've got 14 million five hundred and sixty eight thousand six eighteen and the exact same number. So it's always good to see the numbers match up. Delete that model. As we can see, we're still hitting pretty low frame rates, and I'll just close this down because we're using up some resources. And Microsoft Edge can go. see the command prompts close so we should be hidden much higher than this but we are not and that could be because OBS studio is running and we are seven hours in so there's the first one so let's go with that All good. Yep. Cool. Start that import and let's go to here. Just so we can see this. Why oh, that does that. And I'm looking at the model and I know why something is ha happening and that is a boo boo on my end. I was trying to play around with getting the face shading to assist on the export, which we saw earlier, so I'm actually 
actually adding this back in my own face normals in the script. So we'll delete this because it's redundant. Save, exit, and we'll open up the script and fix that for you. Because this is actually where it is going wrong. And this is me trying to fix another problem in another script, so. some RDC files. Don't worry. We have plenty. And it's going to make me go to desktop. So, where is my recycle bin? See, there they are. And let's click the back command. And here's our other one. So let's have a quick look and as we can see it is 12,578,875,000 nanite vertices but we've got 14 million and 568 and 618,000 vertices what's going on why is this one better and that's where I was to Speaking about running it inside Blender, command prompt, and run it as a bat file. So, just, just a little uh, tip, you might want to run it as a bat file. And we've all seen that they're the same files and everything, so, turn off that. So, weirdly enough, model looks pretty identical and we'll put the other one side by side in a minute just so we can actually see the difference and let's go to our nanite visualization overview we've got our materials like before one two three four five six six did I miss the little one on the other ones? I think I did. Yep, that's okay. Yes, yeah, so the number of materials is right, which is good to see. But we've got a, a much more refined model. And if we close this and run it, we're hitting 130. FPS, but we are looking at 4K model, fully imported, all very automated and simple to use, in my opinion. So I'll try and not zoom so fast as I'm going through, but it's not going to let me, is it? better. 
So it's all looking pretty cool. And let's open up Google Earth so we can see side by side the difference. looking pretty spot on and you will get better textures at this angle being this close as well but you will end up getting a lot more data and that may or may not work well for you So we'll just minimize that one down and then let's go over what I was going to talk about. Google Earth LODs. So Google has a lovely thing called LODs and there we go, there was going to do it again. Uh, you may see if we do it quickly, so. So you saw how the tiles were changing, and that's basically things kicking in. So what I found was, depending on your area, depends on what sort of data you're going to get, and how detailed it's going to be when you're doing it. So for the area that I was doing, I found at about that's where it is, the scale bar. We can open it up and we'll make this a bit bigger. And that's not the right one. It's that one we're after. 20 meters, so we need to zoom out. So I found for the area that I was doing when the scale bar was at 40, the data didn't change much visually, like you'd still get pretty close to what you see down here. Um, at angled shots you might get a bit better and I have been running this with angle shots to try and get it to work doesn't always, but it is a work in progress. But 
when you're doing your vertical shots like this the data didn't seem to change when I imported from that range all the way down to this range the only difference I managed to uh, notice was the polygons and the vertices increased by a lot and what I mean by that is when I went from that altitude of 40 down to about 20 I nearly doubled my polygon and vertice count just by doing that so keep that in mind but you will want to find what um, altitude angle works best for your area and as I said some areas have actually got really good data because it's modeled so from memory let's make that a bit easier uh, let's go to Washington DC because I don't see why that wouldn't have that sort of data that I'm referring to that's not So things like this that you can see this is the 3D model that's been put in and you've got these areas here that aren't quite 3D believe it or not it's flat that's no good as we can see the model is pretty sharp on the edges like we're not getting that same warp that we saw before we're actually getting nice straight edges and so forth so just just something to bear in mind while we wait for that script to finish running and that's what I'm referring to as satellite imaging so we've got our 3d model made ones that have actually been made and we've got these models here where it's actually come from the satellite and stuff so you can see the edges like I'm not from this area but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be like a, a crane perhaps because that's a construction site and Trains don't float, not yet anyway. But yeah, just something to bear in mind. Oh, get a nice bridge in. Perhaps you can use it. Or 3D print it, perhaps. Oh, there we go, so you can see the, the blank spot. That's it. That shading, that's all flat. But I was hoping to get somewhere else, and I'm thinking of. Oh, uh, yeah, what's it called? The White House. Let's see what we can get there while we wait for the script to finish. And I apologize for my spelling. As you can see, it is 1.30 in the morning, so I don't know how much data you get from this because I feel that this is probably one place in America that they won't actually give you 3D information on, and for good reason. Didn't think they would, but you know, it was worth worth a look. But yeah, look at that nice crisp 3D. So there's something you could use that will be much nicer than where I was doing it, but you know, just 
something to bear in mind and uh, research where if you've got an area in mind you might be able to do it, you might not be because it's like this but I think you'll be able to actually find most areas aren't like that. So, essentially that is the script running, and we are still importing. So, let's talk about virtual textures and what that means, but we want to dock this and might as well do this one. So we've already enabled it in the editor and as we can see the file size is 7965 by 7965, 7817 by 7818 and so on. So they're all under that 8k limit as I was saying. But when we try to convert this to a virtual texture it's not going to play ball. And the reason for that is virtual textures need. I'll just turn this into a look because that brightness is hurting my eyes at this time of night. It needs to be a power of two. And what that means is essentially. How do I it'll be two to the power of. What is it for? the power of um, was it 48? No, that's way off. To the power of Ah, uh, that's right, I'm going the wrong way around, sorry. So it's around that mark to be a power of two. So if we open up our texture and I bring it over there to see, we can actually put it to a power of two. And we've got two options. We've got pad to square power of two or pad to power of two. So we can either pad it to it or we can make it to the nearest square. There we go that way it's not going to matter too much what we do here because in a second as you'll see there is a slight issue when you start to pad out your textures and as we can see our textures are now all jumbled. And this is coming down to what is happening is our UV map that was sized correctly to this texture that it was originally at has now increased. But what has happened is the UV map has resized to this new texture size, which is the power of two. So of work around for that is to actually go into the material I believe it is and we are doing the first one I believe it's that one wasn't it yeah it's 
suppose that we need to create a new UV coordinate system. I haven't quite got it to work just yet, but this is where you will do it, is in here. I'm working on an automated script to pad them out to the power of two for you and fix the UVs so they don't scale out of whack. But for the moment, you'll have to actually work this out by hand. And we'll just put that back so we're not interfering with that. And as we can see, we're back to normal. So another little thing we can do to gain some performance is actually here. So what we can do, instead of default width, we can put it under it. And press control so we can drag that down. Click it into immersive, hit apply, and we're going to do the same to this one, and put it to flat, and wrong way, here, apply, put it to immersive, sit, unlit, apply. And this is something I am going to automate in the future. I have a script where you can actually get it to do this all for you if you want to go down this route. But for the meantime, we're going to have to do it by hand. Apply. And apply all these now and hit save all to gain to FPS. It's dropping at the moment because this is actually doing stuff. But we're sitting at a nice frame rate so that's the important thing. And because we're using an emissive colour we can either go two ways about it to get it a bit more natural. We can go and let's crank that down to 0.1. this so it might be a way for you to and there we go there we got a nice lumen effect of it pulsating which is not ideal that's coming down to being emissive but let's change that back up say something a bit higher, point three. And six. That's gonna pulse eight. So that's one way to go about changing the brightness on your model. As we can see, it's not viable. And which one was this? This is the bat one. And what we want to... Was it the bat one we just changed? Yeah, cool. Is we can press the minus key. Uh, it's not the minus key shortcut. M no S O S S I can't remember the shortcut key off the top of my head, so I'm just gonna search it up. Put minus so we can hover over it. Uh, that doesn't hurt, we'll just put a minus in there. Let 
missing bleeding part. Oh. And what we can do is hold two. No, not two. This down, say point eight. Ooh, way too dark. Oh, still way too dark. So point zero one. Let's try point zero one. Zero five. Not quite the same, but. To work around. Okay, try and squeeze out more FPS and so forth. So we can actually go over to model. We can see it's quite different. It's not exactly the nicest. So let's go back down to point five, perhaps. still quite a high contrast so let's just uh, definitely not the alpha let's go that way that looks a bit better So that's using an emissive colour and we've added in a small minus value to that emissive just to bring that brightness down. And it looks pretty good to be honest. Like let's bring in the first model and let's just put it side by side so we can just sort of see the difference in colours and it gives us a reference point as well if we want to have a look at it but as you can see there's quite a bit of difference but back to that is much diff much much nicer I should say not much different This colour is a bit more darker and in some ways it's more vibrant and richer. And in some ways this is nicer when up close. But from a distance this doesn't look as nice as that. So it all depends on your project. So we'll just delete these now anyway because we need some extra juice. So we can get that running. And hopefully, once this is done, we should see a model that looks how I've promised it to be. And I do apologise, this video has gone on quite a while. I will release another video of it much more streamlined and just showing you how to use the script and not all the little extra bits in between but I think it's important to cover this um, sort of things and you can see it actually in action and some settings that I did to sort of get VR and Nanite to work and Lumen. Now we didn't actually see it in this video and I'm not going to go into it but you might experience issues with Lumen and why this is running if by the off chance you run into um, what I was talking about earlier and the import fails for whatever reason, whether you're moving it or the file size was not correct, 
what you can do is you'll be able to see what files are here and you'll know it's going to be one of those files but also in the generated text I've actually added a full import log and it will tell you which ones have been imported successfully and it should put the faults there um, and as we haven't had any runtime errors there's no runtime error log but let's while that's doing it let's see if I can go into my other ones where I've been trying to break it and we've got some runtime errors that these are not installed now these two here don't it doesn't matter for the script to complete but it will be logged as a runtime error just to show that you've not got the add-on and do we have the import separated no so that will be down to So have a look at your successfully imported, you'll be able to sort of see which ones were imported last and narrow down where it had broken because if we go into linear textures, uh, not linear textures, damn it, render docs, current, so you'll be able to go and see, oh I've got all these files. I've only got these four, five. Which ones on here aren't on here? And then you'll know that's going to be your problem file. So move it into a problem folder and or delete it. And try to see if it happens in by manual import. It may, it may not. But if it's failed, hit run the script likely to fail in the editor so my advice is to just put it in the problem folder um, and deal with it that way but once you've done that and say you've got one more to go or a hundred more to go all you have to do is just uh, demo. click your run command and it will start up again and the way the script works is it puts these models in here so once it does that, that information's there so if it does crash you should still be able to just click run and it will essentially carry on the downside will be if you've not had it delete the RDC files so it will re-import that file that's already been imported again so you may want to back it up and set it to auto delete until I release a future script edition to address that issue but this is all something I've been working on a school project and now in my own time so I will try to get it updated for you everyone but please have some patience with it as I don't I have a lot of free time but I don't have that much free time sometimes so it will happen when it happens and I apologize that it's not there now but again pre-release not full release and I will get home and <laughs> so I've added a creative common license and just allow you to download my code and you can edit the only 
request is that you cite me in it just because this is my first automation script that I've wrote as a public release so I would appreciate the citation just to help me get my brand out there if that makes sense and do look into citing ah yeah see there we go that's fixed that if we click on that That's another kink for me to fix. But the original problem that we were seeing of it, the shading, is now gone. So I will push that change up for everybody to see. And let's import it in here just to show that it is working the way it being told. And this is coming down to a copy file and that's why that file looks so much smaller. Uh, not copy file I should say, a absolute which is re essentially making it not quite relative. Sorry. So, not totally sure why that one is much more lower than the rest. And that might be down to we actually set the origin on this one and the way the nanites have been calculated, perhaps. Because our origin is over here instead of the center. But that'll be something that will be addressed. There's the model, all looking pretty much the same, and we're using Nanite. So, thank you for watching, and I will release a very streamlined, basically a how to use the script. But 
I thought it was best to create a video on the full process from start to finish, show you a couple different ways to use it and a couple things to think about. I am really sorry for how long the video has lasted. This is my first tutorial video, so I do realize it has run on for quite some time and I will put in some extra little features possibly by the time the editing is done. But yeah, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy it.